Today we have on Cole Rogers. He's a motivational speaker and martial artist. Cole brings his message of perseverance and he shares his work of bringing the combat arts to every person despite any challenge one is dealing with. So tune in. Through that tragedy, taught me life is finite. You really have a short window to like take what it is that from life that you want and enjoy it. You can go back to that day, February 18, 1990, and change what happened. My my honest answer is I, I wouldn't change it. You're just going to have to go through it, and your strength is going to be found in simply going through it and being authentic and real in the process. I was talking with my pally, the care doctor today, and she, she turned around to me, and she looked at me, and she was like, do you think that you'll eventually be beat this? And I was sort of like, yeah, that's probably what I'm trying to do. No, nothing will ever take away the pain of my daughter not being here. It's my reality. Well, I know what my body's going to do to me. I've got a wheelchair in my future. But you know what I've been looking for? What's that? One with off-road the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Just remembering me as I am, happy and energetic and full of life, no matter what. You can expect a life kick you in the teeth but you always get back up no matter what and you just keep going living adaptive with scott davidson yo what's up everyone thanks for tuning in real quick for more information about our guest previous guest previous episodes or more detailed show notes or whatever else you want information about they hear today on this show go ahead and navigate to livingadaptive.com you can find a link at the bottom of your show notes in your favorite app or browser so go there all right, so we got Cole Rogers on, as you heard, and he is from Fightability. Let's get this interview rolling. Thanks, Cole Rogers, for being here, man. What's up, brother? Cole Rogers, man. It's great to talk to you. Um, we have mutual friends out there in the para jiu-jitsu world. Uh, that includes Rustin Hughes, Max Uloa, Pete McGregor, people like that, man. And you're very much entrenched into a lot of different adaptive things. And right now, you're with Fightability, man. What's that all about? Yes, sir. So I started my company, Fightability, about three years ago um, with the goal of making uh, martial arts and self-defense free to any person with a disability. So when I was a little kid growing up, I've always loved martial arts, self-defense, fighting, things like that. And I was kind of told, you know, just by um, uh, society as a whole almost, oh, this stuff is not for you. Sorry. Um, but I was lucky enough to have some uh, instructors that approached me early on and said, hey, I think we can teach you some of this stuff. And uh, when they came up to me, it was like a whole new world opened up. And then now as an adult, I've kind of seen that there's uh, a lack of the, uh, the availability of things like that for other people out there. And so now I'm trying to be that person that kind of opens up those doors and uh, makes uh, self-defense adaptive for everyone. What kind of content will you display for those that are coming to you, uh, whether it's your social media sites, your websites or whatever, or in person, what kind of content do you provide? So basically, uh, if you go on my social media, you can kind of get a glimpse of uh, what the day-to-day -day fightability training looks like. We do uh, self-defense seminars um, across right now, California, but we're trying to expand it out to being across the United States. Um, and so you can see kind of documentation of some of that, as well as me kind of teaching uh, little videos and things of my day-to-day -day life showing adaptations, whether it's martial arts related or not. And then working with my one-on-one uh, -on -one students that I work with in town as well, uh, all within the realm of self-defense, but kind of bringing in other elements just with the goal of being more uh, independent and adaptive uh, throughout all aspects of our lives. The word adaptive is important to you. It's important to me. What are you adapting to, Cole Rogers? Basically, I see... Um, life as a fight, right? Life throws us curveballs on a day-to-day -day basis. And through training and through studying fighting, I found that uh, with the right mindset and with the right habits, we can kind of create shortcuts for ourselves to make it easier to overcome those obstacles and those curveballs. So that's what I see being adaptive uh, as being as preparing ourselves for the fight that we uh, don't know uh, what it's going to look like, but we know eventually uh, will be coming. You've had to fight since you were a baby, since you were born, man. What was it like? Well, I was blessed, thankfully. Um, although uh, early on, you know, um, I had some physical challenges and things like that. I had a very supportive family and I had a very good group of friends. So, when I was a little kid, I was really more focused on, you know, playing and, and having a good time and, and 
I wasn't really feeling like I was being put down or, or anything by the other kids at school. It was more as I kind of started to grow up a little bit that I really started to see uh, some of the real barriers and challenges uh, that face people with disabilities out there in the world and myself included. And it uh, was actually one of our mutual friends, Rust, in that told me that uh, people with disabilities are three times more likely to be attacked. And you can look up the statistic on this yourselves. But um, when I heard that, it kind of took martial arts as uh, something that I just did for fun and to uh, use as a, a great form of exercise for me since a lot of other sports and, and things are, are a little bit more challenging for me to do. I took it from uh, just something like that that was a hobby to something that I felt uh, I had to actively pursue to make the world a safer place because there are people out there that don't feel safe, you know, living in their day-to-day -day lives. And if I can make people feel safer through what I do, uh, then I'm extremely happy. Now, you talked about having challenges growing up. What exactly were your challenges when you were born? What were you? Uh, what was the card that you were given, and how did you push forward? So basically, uh, my situation is I have a disability called arthrogryposis, and uh, what that means is all the joints in my body are fused. And so if you think about a normal joint, how it bends, all mine are in a locked position. And so as I was growing up, I kind of had to figure out alternative ways to do things. And as I said, um, I was really blessed to uh, have some great peers and great people that I grew up around. And I, you know, have met a lot of people that grew up in different parts of the world that uh, not only had their physical challenges to deal with, um, but also, you know, uh, challenges socially and, you know, emotionally. And so I'm very blessed that those weren't my challenges. But, you know, I did have to overcome my physical situation and and figure out, you know, different ways to eat. I don't use my hands to eat. I basically just bend my face down to the plate, you know, and kind of like suck up the food like an anteater would, you know? And so, um, people look at that maybe sometimes like it's a little strange, but to me it was kind of intuitive, you know, it's like, I need to eat the foods down there. My hands aren't coming to my mouth. So I got to go down to the food, you know? And so it's kind of funny when you ask me that question, because I almost have to think really hard about it because to me, it didn't so much feel like a challenge because I was just born in this situation, you know, it was more just like coming up in my own unique organic way, I guess you could say. You have a lot of content you put out there and we get to see you out there doing athletic endeavor endeavors, everyday life endeavors, and you speak quite a bit, man. And you're a very eloquent speaker and you talk about very tough subjects like being ridiculed, denied and bullied, but you refuse to be seen as a victim. What does that mean? Well, I think that we all, as hard as it can be sometimes, I truly believe that we're all in control of our own destiny. Not necessarily in a sense of how much time we have on this world or what physical situation we find ourselves in, but we all have the ability to decide what we're going to do, you know, with that situation. And my biggest goal is just to always, always, always make the best out of my situation. And based on my life experiences and seeing the people that I've uh, seen and met, I know that I have a long way to go. People will say, oh, you know, you're so inspiring, da, 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 da. But I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes I feel very lazy and I feel like there's so much more that I could be doing. So my biggest thing is that I just want to maximize myself and my potential and, and really reach my full potential and help others do the same. And so if I can do that with my speaking or through, you know, just going out there in the world and, and doing the things that I do, whether it's teaching self-defense, being out there, you know, in the outdoors and trying to, uh, you know, pursue different challenges in that realm. I think that if we can all kind of come together on that larger, uh, larger thread and just kind of take, uh, the, um, you know, instead of, worrying so much about what has happened to us or why we're in the situation. We should be more worrying about, you know, whether or not we're maximizing the situation that we're in. You know what I mean? Like, I can't remember exactly where or, or who I heard the quote from. It's probably somewhat of a famous quote and, and I'm just, you know, butchering it. But I've heard it said that uh, the difference, you know, between animals and people are that animals don't have the ability to feel bad for themselves. You know what I mean? Um, a wounded, uh, a wounded dog or a wounded bird, it's not going to sit there and say, oh man, I wish I wasn't wounded. It, they just try to flap through it or crawl through it or, 
or basically just, you know, continue pressing on until, you know, basically the bitter end. And I would like to continue pressing on to an end that leaves a body of work behind that I hope can truly inspire and motivate the next generation of people and, and hopefully entertain people as too, because, uh, at the end of the day, I think that, uh, since life is so short, we might as well be smiling, having a good time laughing. And so if I can add some of that into my training and my speaking and my blogging, you know, I'm really excited to do that as well as the more serious kind of, you know, motivational, don't give up, press on words, always, you know, type things as well. That press on, that don't give up, um, it doesn't just happen naturally for a lot of people. It may for many, but it doesn't for a lot of others. Did you always find yourself in a position where you just didn't feel like a, like a victim at all? Let's just get this going, like whether it's the circumstance of uh, congenital issues or it's just regular life issues that all pop up. We're all going to face something uh, as we go through the phases of life. And were you always in that realm of I'm not a victim? Well, we all have challenges you know what i mean the main difference between mine and everyone else's um kind of on the service level is that uh people can see exactly you know when they meet me they can see okay this guy's in a chair he's got these physical things going on but what i like to do is kind of flip the script around a little bit and say well you know okay i guess that can indeed be a barrier but I think that we all, you know, no one's challenges are bigger than anyone else's. It's just mine kind of set me up in a way to uh, really exemplify that. And kind of like, because physical tasks are, you know, at the end of the day, harder for me a lot of times than someone who was born with, you know, uh, two legs and two arms. It's a situation of if I just gave up, there's a lot of just day to day things that I would never get done. You know what I mean? Like, this situation puts me in a position to where I almost have to have that mentality. Like, for example, a story that I'll always remember that kind of, you know, growing up in this situation, things like this happen to you a lot. And I think for other people that might not have uh, a physical disability, all they really need to do is just, you know, go out, train hard and just put themselves in, in tough situations and not take the easy way out. And they can get this mentality too. But you know, in a, when you have a disability, it kind of forces you to do it sometimes. And uh, one of the examples that I always think of is when I was a little kid, I was trying to learn, you know, the whole going to the bathroom on my own thing. And it's not, you know, like being two or three and, you know, your parents teach you and then you do it. It's for me, it's like I'm 14 and I'm figuring out, OK, how am I going to get myself off this chair to this toilet and get my pants up and not fall on my head, you know, when I do it? And so I was kind of making some good leaps and bounds because I was kind of away from my house and things. And so I had to, you know, just take a bet and be like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom now. So I'm just going to go to this bathroom and do it. You know what I mean? I couldn't say, you know, hey, mom, if I, if I ran into a problem, I couldn't yell, hey, mom, you know, can you help me with this? And so basically it came to a point where I was getting back into my chair. And um, sure enough, I uh, bumped into uh, the door which was blocked by my chair and, um, and closed the door. Um, so basically like I kind of had to leave it slightly bumped open or else I couldn't get out. And so basically it took me like 45 minutes to get out of the bathroom at that point. Um, and it was a situation where I was just too embarrassed to like yell to my cousins, like, Hey, you know, give me some help with this. And so 45 minutes later, I emerged out of the bathroom and I arranged different furniture in the bathroom and, and used stuff under the sink and made basically like a ramp, like a miniature ramp for me to crawl up over my chair with to get to the door to unlatch it because I couldn't, you know, stand up to reach it. And coming through things like that, just to go to the bathroom, you kind of, you know, have to just keep fighting. And it's like, all right, you know, like, what's the next challenge then? Like, I got through that. Like, let's just keep going and, and keep figuring out. And you find you'll rise to bigger and bigger and bigger challenges. And pretty soon, you know, that thing that was impossible at one time is now just an everyday thing that I do every day for myself. And luckily I'm blessed that I can independently do that now. Cole Rogers, over the years, you've displayed your levels of independence and this has led to a bunch of adventures. Did you ever think you were going to be doing all of this? No. Well, that's, that's very tough. Cause I was always an imaginative kid, but like I told you, like I thought, you know, Oh, you know, I like all this martial artsy stuff, but I can't do that. You know what I mean? I'm in a wheelchair. Like 
I see these mentalities and the and these things that get shoved into kids' brains just like residually through society and it breaks my heart and if I can do anything to kind of like curb those things and uh, I was actually talking to Rustin about it recently like I think about myself with that mentality and not only you know thankfully I had the people that were able to bridge that gap of um, okay uh, you can do it but not only that but having to kind of on a day-to-day basis going from like, okay, now I'm six, like, let's look at 16 year old me. I was still putting stuff out on YouTube, doing the same thing that I'm doing now. And it was when I got exposed for the first time to people saying, you know, truly nasty kind of messed up things to me about what I was doing, you know? And that was a time when I then had to reevaluate like, oh, you know, can I actually do this? Like, am I actually doing it? Like, are, you know, these like hateful people, right? And it was, you know, having to go through that step a couple times that really concreted that you can do whatever you set your mind to mentality that sometimes I didn't always have growing up because of, you know, the things that I would hear. And it was like, I was doing a uh, a kids camp in San Diego a couple weeks ago. Um, we had like 60 kids come through uh, from like six to 18, all with various, you know, most of them were in wheelchairs, but some of them with walkers and things like that. And there was this kid and it, it really bummed me out. But, you know, I tried to, to be as positive as I could with the situation. Um, and what he, he asked was, I was there with my girlfriend, Alexandra, and he was like, uh, you know how kids kind of just kind of ask awkward questions. He looked at her like, Oh, like, um, would you guys ever get married? And, um, she was like, she was, you know, a little embarrassed because we're, you know, a younger couple. We're not really thinking about getting married or anything crazy like that right now. But she was just like, well, I mean, like maybe someday. And he's in a chair himself. And he was just like, well, how could you guys get married? Like, how would you do it? You know, and because she's an able bodied girl, like it almost looks kind of funny sometimes when her and I are together because she's like six foot one and I'm, you know, in my wheelchair about like five foot basically. So she stands quite a bit taller than I do. But she basically was just like, well, I mean, we would get married just like anyone else does. Like, uh, why wouldn't we be able to get married? And when she asked him that, he kind of thought about it. And then he was like, oh, well, you know, I guess that's true. But what made me sad was just knowing that he had that internalized view of people with disabilities of just like, oh, well, you know, you can't marry like this big, beautiful, tall, you know, walking girl because you're in a wheelchair. And it's just like, yeah, you can, you know. I can and you can, buddy, you know, we all, we can do whatever we want to do. And so that's kind of where I see those little versions of myself that maybe wasn't as confident or was buying into, you know, the whole, like, you're crippled, you can't do anything lie that society tells us, you know what I mean? And so if I can just kind of cut all that extra work of having to, you know, reevaluate it, try to do it and just open up these kids minds to just like, okay, let's just go out and do it and crush it and just not feel the fear. Because one of the other things that really helped me out a lot was through martial arts, you learn how to fall. You know what I mean? You learn how to hit the ground and roll. And that's one of the biggest things that I teach at my seminars. And then I show people is that you can fall out and you can be okay. And it's that ability to just trust the fall and let yourself fall and know that you're going to roll that, you know, when you're doing something brand new like me, like <laughs> going out and swimming in the lake with my girlfriend Alexandra a couple weeks ago, you know what I mean? And trying out a new life vest and and I can swim, but just that fear of, you know, when you first start to float, it's just like, oh man, like I might drown right now. And then just like, boom, the thing floats you up and you start kicking your legs and you're like, wow, there's a way I can do this. I can be out in this lake, you know, and I can do it. It, it really just makes you want that bigger challenge, you know, and to go on and and move on to the next thing. And I think that's what it's really about is it's not about any sort of benchmark or, you know, who can be better than uh, who. It's about just uplifting ourselves and uplifting each other and using competition to maximize ourselves, not to try to, you know, put down anyone else or anything like that. Cole Rogers, you're right. When you say that a lot of times it's put in the head that you can't do it. You can't make this happen, especially people that are coming from physical disabilities, physical challenges. 
and especially those that just go through recent accidents because they just haven't had the time to get it right in their head and to figure out their body. And they have this mindset, it's not going to happen. Well, you get to actually talk to these people. What do you say, man? You got a few sentences to say something to them. You said a little bit about it. What do you say to them if they want to learn how to fight? I don't say nothing, man. I knock them out of their wheelchair and put them in a chokehold. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, in a sense, I'm kind of kidding, and I'm also kind of not kidding. Um, because I love talking, you know what I mean? And I can mm -hmm. talk all day, and that's why I do the whole motivational speaker thing is because I see that as a way to bridge what I've learned in martial arts out into, like, let's call it the uh, the quote-unquote unquote, corporate world, you know, like I'll do speeches for, uh, you know, corporations or, or their regional meetings or nonprofits or, or, you know, rotaries or churches or things like that. And I'm trying to take, basically what I'm trying to do at that moment is almost package up this the essence of this thing that to me is, you know, fighting is the metaphor, but it can be anything. You know, it's the same feeling in a jujitsu role, climbing a mountain, playing a piece perfectly on an instrument, you know, whatever, you know, things that I'm not passionate about that other people might be passionate about, you know, snowboarding, cooking, anything that you can be passionate about and feel passionate about. It's that moment when you're in it and you're doing it. I'm trying to take that for fighting out there to, you know, these people that probably will never, ever try fighting. But for my brothers or my sisters with disabilities, the only real way I feel that I can convey that to them is to get them out onto the mat, get them out of their chair, and to have them feel what it's like to hit a pad be mounted and to push somebody off of them and to get on top of them and, you know, get them pinned down, like things that are, you know, completely foreign. Maybe it's something that when they, before they had their accident, they remember doing. And then now it's like, oh, I'm never going to do that again. And boom, yes, you are. Feel it. That's to me what it's about. You know what I mean? Is that feeling in that moment where you're just doing and living your passion and unless, you know, I could talk about it all day, but I would highly, highly, highly urge everyone, you know, come out to a seminar, let's train, and let's really feel what it's about together. Cole Rogers of Fightability, how do they hang out with you? How do they get to a seminar? Where do they find all this information? Yeah, no, that's a great, that, that's the next question, right? So uh, facebook.com slash fightability is like the, you know, hub where I post most of my dates of actual physical training sessions. Um, right now we're kind of centralized to uh, the Los Angeles or uh, Central California area. Um, but we are expanding all the time. Uh, hopefully, very soon, we're going to have seminars coming to Oregon, Georgia. Um, my goal, nothing planned yet, but I would like to see it hit the East Coast very, very soon. Um, and so you can go to those uh, things if you're able to. Or if you have an organization that you want me to, you know, put an event on or anything like that, I'm more than happy to do that. Or if, you know, you're in a different part of the world and you want to connect to all this stuff, drop me a line. I'm very, very in tune with just trying to get people training and motivated in their own areas to uh, link up with instructors. That would be, you know, a good fit for them. And uh, just to do it in whatever way that we need to, because I really believe that training has something to offer everyone. And even if we're not in the same geologic, geographical space, um, I still think that we can make something happen. And, you know, the Internet's a beautiful thing in that way. What? Where do you see yourself in the future, man? You were talking about seminars coming up. Where do you see yourself a few years from now? Where's your content going? So basically the bigger or the, the goal that I would like fightability in my um, kind of personal endeavors uh, to go into is I'd like to see it go from just me going around and, and teaching seminars to something that can organically create programs anywhere where people are and something that has enough uh, backing behind it to where I can, you know, if someone is in a hard spot financially and they're 
want to get involved with this stuff and, you know, they're struggling, I can say, hey, don't worry about the bill. Not only can you do your training, but your instructors can get paid and we can make that happen through our, you know, funding and corporate sponsorship or donations or however that ends up looking. I would like to see it be big enough to where I can help people on a much, much larger scale. Um, the model that I'm doing right now is good and I'm happy to go around, but I think that the message can reach much, much further um, as I grow it and as I get, you know, just more people behind it and more momentum because I'm going around city to city right now and spreading the word and I see it get bigger every day. And I think that once I can kind of uh, get the roots laid down in these cities, you know, and throughout the United States, then I can kind of tie it together throughout the bigger message of, okay, let's uh, network the training and get everybody doing their own thing in their own area and kind of making the fightability message a universal thing. Cole Rogers, you are a, seriously, you're an incredible speaker. You empower me. Um, you're empowering our listeners and having you here is awesome. I appreciate Rustin Hughes connecting us. I appreciate Max Uloa too, and Pete McGregor and others who have pointed me towards your way. Um, the whole scene that's out there, man, whether it's adaptive fighting, adaptive OCR, whatever, we're figuring out a way to make shit happen and the things we like to do. And you're a very good example of that, man. So I appreciate you coming here. We're going to follow you and we're going to catch back up with you, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you having me on. You know, much love to Rustin. He's a true brother in my, of mine. Much love to Max and Pete. Those guys are awesome. Um, I'm excited. I want to just keep collaborating like this with everybody because I think that that's what this is all really about is us coming together and uh, overcoming challenges together and uplifting each other and just taking each other to the next level. That's what I want to see happen in all different realms. All right, listeners, that's our episode. Remember, go to livingadaptive.com to find previous episodes, show notes, contacts for guests like this guest, links to social media accounts, and a bunch of other good stuff. So go there. Peace.